Hey y'all, happy throwback Thursday. Time in California is 11.21 a.m. on this uh, April the 28th. I hope everyone is doing well and had a wonderful week. I know I've been quiet. Yes, I'm still testing out my filters for my channels and just having fun with life. <laughs> yes, I know that my face is getting fat. Don't forget my weight is shifting because I'm on testosterone and I'm starting my sex change journey. I have learned a lot. There's much to catch up on right now. <laughs> I had to take a break from everything just so I could just focus on stuff. And there's a lot happening. Great things. Just I'll never forget that when my dad was alive, he would give me the most craziest challenges and things to sit there to manifest and produce and solve. Okay. Just out of nowhere. He's like, you know what? By this day, we have to have this business in order, have employees set in place, get equipment, get everything in order. My job is just to make it happen. <laughs> ah, I have done with stuff I never thought I would deal with before. But it was worth it, though. Because I always learned something at the end of the run, it was worth it. So even in death, daddy is still giving me some crazy-ass challenges. And he's testing my brain. So whatever I'm going through right now, I'm coming out of retirement. There's a lot of stuff going on. Not bad. It's just a lot. <laughs> So where do I start with this, you guys? There's been so much that's going on that I have not mentioned because I've just had to process. And I'm not even mad or upset. It's just trying to pace myself with energy. Um, I'm notice noticing a lot of changes as far as since I had the um, aneurysm quelling surgery done back in December, tied to my heart. And I'm noticing, I'm finding out that things happen for a reason. Again, divine design. Um, the things that are causing me high stress and people who are just not good for me, I have to remove people and situations from my environment. Everything has a season. And I know it, it hurts because, you know, everything grows. We're just passing on through. And some people don't take well to rejection. And um, I'm learning a lot about people. And not trying to sit there and hurt anybody. I still am maintaining and reinforcing my boundaries. And I don't like when people test my intelligence. I'm looking at you doing some stupid, weirdo-ass, stalkertastic shit. So whatever I say on here, all true stories, as many people know, I really am still working on my temper right now because there's a side of me and I have to really watch that. I, I have to have a conversation with the neurologist. I was supposed to go to my appointment at 11.15. I rescheduled for Monday just because i getting calls between... Uh, the police department for different things going on, not bad, just different projects going on, not just one. Uh, dealing with attorneys for other things, too. I have to sit there and interview for a huge litigation project. I say that, again, you know, blessings come in disguise and karma has no deadline. And it's interesting because whatever people do in the dark always has a way of surfacing and comes to light. All people have to do is just do the right thing. So... Starting number one is I am on month two, going into month three of my uh, testosterone weekly shots. And for the people or my fellow members of the LGBTQ community, for, for the transgenders, yeah, it's definitely a process. You guys are learning right along with me right now. My body is changing. And everyone's supportive is just asking a lot of questions. And I'm figuring out a lot of stuff too is going down. <laughs> so... Another reason why my face is getting fat too, because it's around the time that my cycle should be popping up. But the thing is, my cycle is going to, is disappearing slowly because the testosterone is taking over the other hormones. But my body is still kind of fighting and adjusting to things, which is why my face is also getting fat. I don't understand. What else is there going on? I'm getting a little bit more facial hair. I still can't wait for my voice to actually drop, drop. It's going up and down. My, my body's confused. It is very true. As some people have asked me, yeah, for females that take testosterone shots, it's still a steroid. Um, yes, you are. Your your clitoris will sit there and enlarge, which right now, and I'm noticing even after getting out the shower this morning, it's uncomfortably enlarging to like it's like a pre forming small mini penis, I guess. It feels very uncomfortable because there's a lot of like it's very highly sensitive and it's not comfortable sensitive. This is not good sensitive. I don't feel it feels weird, but it's temporary. <laughs> this is all prep before I get my surgery done, which, by the way, and thankful for uh, my fellow, um, my brothers and my sisters of the LGBTQ community and the supporters, because um, they've seen some people who've gone through the transition, too. 
I'm thinking I can have my surgery done, not not being the top. I'm gonna keep my. I'm just wear a a sports bra. They're already deflating anyway, which is cool. I'm starting to get pecs, which is good. But down there, I can't even be considered for surgery at least for about at least a year, a year plus. So they're giving all this stuff a chance to kick in. And where most people get the testosterone shots every other week, they sped the process up for me to where it's every week. I have to have it every week. And I'm still learning. That's some thick oil. And not just that. Um, yeah, yeah, I don't say that roid rage is where you have to understand how to deal with your anger and things that used to piss you off, piss you off even more now. Um, you just have to know how to, to deal with that. Um, but yeah, they sped my process up. So right now I'm going through puberty I'm all over. You know, your hormones are all over the place when you're teenagers. I'm going through that on top of uh, accelerated menopause at the same time. They sped the process up. <laughs> it's temporary. It will get better. But just for right now, your girl's all over the place. And I'm trying to be cool, okay? That's why I'm staying away from people for your safety and my sanity. <laughs> so I figure this shit out. In the meantime, I just don't like people right now. I like people, but just I don't be around people right now. <sighs> I'm just funny about my energy. So where do we start from here, you guys? Um, but yeah, the, the, the enlarging clitoris, which is going to eventually turn into a mini penis, that it's real. And the sensations down there feel very uncomfortably sensitive right now. Um, no exaggeration. And yeah, growing the hair on the face and things like that, my body started shift. I am starting to become a little bit buffered, but it encourages you to work out more to shift that muscle in the right place. And when the um what the specialist told me is that, you know, my expect my stomach to get bigger. Now I see why they said that first, but that's not gonna be the case with me. Um, because they cannot shoot me in my abdomen. They're, they're figuring out, I'm learning, you have to sit there and shoot me in different areas every time you inject me. Because if you don't massage in certain areas, like for me, I had um, an abdominoplasty or a tummy tuck in liposuction years ago. So the way that my stomach or abdomen is structured, um, it didn't take well with it. It turned to a ball, like a golf sized ball of that oil injected into my muscle. And it's finally almost gone. Now it says 316. But anywhere else, like my legs, I'm okay with that. A little bit sore. I'm starting to see the sore because they're getting into the muscle. I'm learning the art, but I'm not ready to inject myself. So I'll just go by and visit Doc's office every week. And he doesn't mind. Everybody's all cool. In fact, I'll be going there later today, drop off some donuts and stuff, and just say thank you. <laughs> so what have you guys missed with me? A lot. <laughs> Better than on TV show. So, so where do I start with this, you guys? A lot of it is just enlightenment and making peace and just confirmation as I'm moving on the right path. And a lot of good karma, but also the crazy situations I have to get through before I send and get that end result. And it's worth it. It's easily laid out and it's making me work my brain more, but it's worth it because it's easy. The truth never changes. And it's easy because I have all the receipts, concrete evidence. So when people lie and do stupid shit, I'm looking at you, lying to me and showing you. <laughs> everybody really, not everybody. Some people really have a, a, a issue with rejection and um, being exposed. You know, you should be doing certain shit. And I catch you in it. Don't be mad at me. Just remove yourself and fix it. Do the right thing. Some people just don't like being left behind and just, it's weird. And the things that one person said they would never do, and they see I just went through something, you're doing the exact same thing, if not worse. That shit is creepy. But it just confirms who's connected to who. I'm getting all kinds of things coming out the woodworks right now. And my thing is just to cancel everything. When I say cancel, I mean cancel those toxins and those things out and not back down. No means no. When I say do not contact me, let me go, let me go. And I need to, I want to, in case for any reason that Broski is watching this, I, I don't even know he's watching, whatever. Just know that whatever happened with me and you, because shaming him, and I'm not shaming him, it's telling the truth. My main thing is there's a lot of things that happen behind the scenes, and it just it was not, it's, it's time for me to take a different journey. And he understands why, but just didn't want to accept it. You know, our situation became toxic entanglement. It's an addiction. I get it. But how many different ways can a female say no and don't contact me more? I'm on a whole different path. I'm turning into a dude. We can't do this anymore. I want to go back to the hibernation phase. 
It's not just because of anything he did specifically wrong, even though he wasn't good for me, even though we're good together. Not like that, though. Not like relationship. I'm talking about like homies. It just wasn't, it was bad karma for me. And what people don't realize is that you know my story and things I've been through. So amount of trauma with always being sexually exploited or sexualized or being great molested, abused, whatever I've gone through, you know, I've always had to compromise myself pretty much in slavery to that part all my life and always serving somebody or compromising myself. And this is where that's not me anymore. It hasn't been like that for a while. And people need to support that. That's like somebody figuring out their spiritual calling as being a monk or a nun or of a priest. And you follow your calling. And it's been like that. Not everybody has to have love in that area, but still feel love and still give love. You know, they don't have to have that component. And I just, I just, I'm kind of over that, especially with men. Not everybody's so accepting of that. And it makes it worse because each time I see why, I just, I really, even though I'm becoming a man, I actually technically am a man. Officially. I just am still waiting to go through the birth certificate change, new social security number. I'm disappearing from the map. I wonder if they could sit there and do the whole, uh, raise my finger. That's going to be interesting with the fingerprints, a live scan. But my whole identity just disappears, even for DMV record. And I'll be shutting down these platforms because I have something new building. And not everybody's going to have access to that because you'll never be able to find me. But I'm healing from trauma. And not everybody understands that. And they say that, well, they think they're going to be exception, but you're hurting me much worse than what the previous person did. But for bro, when I even talked to our mutual homie last week, because whatever happened, and I had no choice, I looked at how many times, I'm not beating bro up, he's still bro, I still have love for you, I just can't fuck with you, we have to keep our situations moving. And it took me to a point to where since you kept coming back, you don't respect boundaries, let your job tell you. And I was still nice because I'm not going to press charges and the other things. I had a valid case. I just didn't. I'm not doing this. The main thing was just to stop it. And from there, new doors open with things coming out the woodworks, not even connected to him. So for his boss, who I did not know is connected to other homeboy, his ex-wife, and they're all allies and went to the police academy together, all this other stuff. I'm not talking about home, but I'm talking about the wife, the one who I don't talk to anymore. The, 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 the mm. <laughs> she still has her flying monkeys watching me. They don't intimidate me. She's still on my, she's on my page right now on my platform. One of them, she's still watching. Only thing she did, because I'm catching you watching me, she took the investigation they had going on a government, a government departmental confidential investigation on a professional level she found out exactly who i was because her homegirl talks to her i already knew that anyway and people act our retaliation and she's a flying monkey and i say flying monkey nothing racist i'm talking about you know how for narcissists if they can't get to you one way or whatever else they feel ashamed they're trying to sit there and get their whole entourage to sit there and attack who they're trying to get rid of and I was a flying monkey too. That's why I was going to say it. So I, my main things were my homegirl protect her when I was when I was fucking with her like that. You know what I mean? So whoever said what, no, nah, just point. I'm, I'm kicking whoever's ass. That's the way it goes. Or have our girls back. Let me just say that just because you had an experience with someone, I don't care if you went to the academy with them or you guys work in the same field for law enforcement. I don't care how you knew them at that point. Does not mean you know them, and that is not your friend. It's somebody you had an experience with. And it's just it, for I'm learning with the law enforcement departments, not just one, but in general, it's like high school with some gossipy ass, like it's messy. And I'm saying as a civilian, <laughs> it's a lot. And so help me understand that I can see one thing if I actually knew this person ahead of time or that high ranking officer, and I don't care if it's the chief's wife, you don't intimidate me. My, the main thing is for you to stop some sergeants went through and you're doing the same exact type of pattern. I had mercy and consideration, still love for my bro. I still have love for him. I just had to sit there and just say, don't contact me. You, I press charges against. I have no problem moving forward because you're doing the exact same thing. You're abusing power and acting in misconduct. And you think people are stupid. So as I'm catching you in a lie, so let me back up, let me back up. It'd be one thing if that person saw both sides of the situation. She's just going by her home girl. 
And I'm sure she's very curious because she sees I'm tied to a lot of people in your department and have a lot of involvement in your community. But in the meantime, you're trying to back your girl who doesn't even work for the department. You took a government investigation to add yourself personally onto a platform. And then after, even from the, within a couple hours, I picked it up because something wasn't right. I know you're sitting there doing something messy. Don't even know. And I asked, who the hell is she at first? I didn't think about it because keep in mind, I had brain surgery. It didn't come until after. And I started connecting the doctor just like that. And come to find out, she's connected to the person who I don't even talk to anymore and dropped off the map since last year and exposed because she was trying to get caught up with some bullshit. I could see if this person, that high-ranking officer, um, was in the middle of situations with me. She wasn't there when I said her serving uh, papers and drawing up the filing papers in the current court on your girl's behalf to protect her for some shit that she actually started and I didn't find out until after the fact. You weren't there when in the middle of fights, in the middle of uh, even any type of functions. Actually, when I was there, I never met you in person. I just heard about you from her directly too. You know what I mean? So unless you're in the middle of situations, unless you know both sides and see for yourself, I saw everything for myself. You need to stay out of grown folks' business. And you're a day late dollar short because this girl, I'm not, she's not even a, a fucking factor to me since last year. My life has gone on. Notice I keep it moving and not look back. So you're coming in after the fact to be nosy, but for business purposes, for department business in summertime, for you and your husband, you guys, and I, I really feel like there is some retaliation and ostracizing going on because when it came to you guys over the summer, reaching out for some major projects, not just tied to my projects, but also tied and also misconduct from other officers, people dropping the ball. But even you guys missed out on a few murderers over the, uh, the summer. Don't always trust things that you hear from that person that you really don't know and haven't kicked it with just because you had experiences with her. You look to see what the actual proof shows you with concrete receipts and valid reason. So I'm going to leave that there. But I don't mind being watched because all this person is doing, because all she's doing is, is weird because even with this thing happening, not my first time with the retaliation with police department. They don't like to be called on bullshit, especially if it's a high ranking officer. They'll try to have their little uh, flying monkey circle to try to cover for them. Which is also getting them caught up because now we have obstruction of justice. It's not just saying it, it's actually you having an official police report filed against you for the same thing that you just investigated and you had no business being a part of and didn't disclose you had a conflict of interest because you know of me. And I'm tied to your homegirl and one of your officers. But that's okay because all that's happening right now, the truth comes to light and it's helping to build my case. So just thank you for paying me in advance. Thank you for helping me prove my cases. Everything is all concrete evidence. So, and, and even from the email that you sent, so you said one thing, the screenshots show otherwise, and you're still on my page, by the way, but enjoy the show while you can. So anyway, aside from that, um, I renewed the domestic violence order against my mother because um, I've been there since 2018, 2019, but I made it permanent. I meant what I said. And I know it bothered her quite a bit, but it's necessary. The same game she played with me, and it's weird because we had to appear in court. That was the 4th of April. I don't have any interest in, after all she's done and exploited me to, and she's the main source of abuse all my life, and especially after these recent months, and I know her pattern, the same thing she did to me, she tried to, though she did do to my dad before he passed away when they were together. And she tried to have me institutionalize my brother and also exploited him to all kinds of abuse and my stepbrothers. And then also did the same thing to my stepdad or tried to after she did to me. She's sick. And I don't have to say anything because all these things is that, you know, for the law enforcement, they only see the clutch system. But for the court system, all the information you have to provide to show and build and validate your case, including police reports to show and she didn't realize it, she was making certain statements, so she didn't know how to just sit there and accept defeat. She wanted to sit there and file an order for elder abuse. For what? <laughs> You're the one contacting me and having my son try to sit there and stalk me through social media to find me and report back to you and confirm to the, the, the sheriff's deputy that you just want to keep tabs on me in violation of an order. There's a reason why I went to the DA. 
So if I have let go of you, I have not looked back. I have no interest in making anything work with you ever again in life. And God bless you. I forgive you. But never again. Why do you need to have an elder abuse report for anything to retaliate against me? And you're the one that's contacting me. You're the one that's stalking and violating orders. You have to think about that. But uh, for narcissists, they have to keep gang things. They're things to sit there and attack you back. So because I rejected her, you're things to sit there. And for just cause, she can't accept the truth, but wants to sit there and hurt back. For what reason is not going to stand. There's a reason why I had to change my name and whole identity under the Safe at Home program through the Secretary of State. Does that make sense? But some, it's not easy for a narc to sit there and be exposed like that. So the same paperwork she was served with, the judge sees all this. He's already reviewed the case. He was shaking his head too, just listening to her. But orders granted, no surprise, and that's it. What else is there? Um, for my stepdad, who was one of my other main abusers too, her husband, and go figure out, it doesn't make, it'll never make sense to me how that works because I know for narcissists, they can't be alone. They always have to have some type of validation or some type of supply. And she sold her kids off to slavery at the expense for her to have a great lifestyle. Never understand that. Because she still stayed, even after all that happened, she still stayed in the house with him, but couldn't stand him and try to kill him too. Literally. She's been in jail a few times and she's 70, what? 80 something now? <laughs> Don't judge a book by its cover. <laughs> she could be a, a cute little happy church lady, but she still is like Mike Tyson. <laughs> but his funeral, as he passed away on the 25th, and um, I really do appreciate my big bro, Sean, because um, regardless of me cutting the whole side of the family off, my mom's side of the family, um, and even for my son, I see that's an extension of the abuse I came from because he's now groomed and mirrored into what they are to continue that type of energy. I love my child and I made it clear to him too. Good luck in life with that part because I don't owe you anything. I have been there for 17 and a half plus years and damn near 18. I've always been there. I looked at thousands of pictures of everything I've been to support him and been a part of. But my stepdad had a thing about hating women and encouraging you to disrespect women, including your mother, because he had mommy issues. So let that go. I still pray, still pray for him. But I just know I'm not, I'm not putting up with the bullshit. I've been through too much. And I don't care what people say about, you know, that's still your child. That's still your mother. You know, your mother sit there and, and give your sex tapes to your stepdad in order to sit there and sexually assault you and exploit you and set you up and take your credit and things like that. And your kids will do the same exact extension of what they do. And I'm not crazy when I say that because um, he's an exact extension of the abuse I left from. But he chose that because they sat there and groomed him very well with brand new cars, let him do whatever he wanted to do. But they felt about the life skills part and had to fight with them in order to teach him life skills and discipline him. I say discipline, not not putting my hands on him. But if you didn't work hard for something for all the thousands of me and your dad have invested into you because he disrespects his dad too. He's really a spoiled brat. I love my child. I'm not beating him up. We'll have a conversation about that maybe later in the future. If I let his dad know too what's going on. Because what he's doing is not right. That's bad karma. Nobody's perfect. Everybody has a story. He doesn't know his dad's story. But you don't take your blessings for granted. And I don't feel powerless because I, even over three years, he's had the keys to my place. He's always had a place to go and still grow. But the, at the same way people warned me, I warned him. And others have said the same, even for my stepbrothers. Even my brother, there's a reason why my brother wanted to kill <laughs> my mom and my stepdad. I get it. <laughs> I understand some stuff, stuff I've seen. Bruh. I try to warn him, but he'll get it in later in life. In due time, he'll understand like daddy told me. But back to my saying. So stepdad passed on March 25th. And I had a moment for the trauma bonding or the Stockholm syndrome. Because that's all I really knew aside from my dad. I've known that man since eight years old. But he was also grooming and abusing me too in the meantime on other levels. I was going to stuck around the longest. <laughs> I don't owe me and my siblings. 
And it was bittersweet because I kept in touch with his uh, his baby sister who flew up from Louisiana. And I noticed a lot during that process because even for my stepbrothers, I'm not playing victim about anything. I'm just making observations. It's not our fault about what happened to us with our parents, okay? That they will always resent it. Even I just bring me confirm. I agree that my mom is evil. I agree with my stepbrothers wholeheartedly. But what did I do to you? I might be her child, but I'm on your side. You know how many fights I had to have with my mom over you guys? <laughs> In protection of you. <laughs> I hooked you up with my former best friend. But sometimes you get punished for things you have no part of. That even so, he still contacted for a minute. If you had a different motive, and I just don't have time for this shit. So if I'm done and Ben's cut that side of the family off, there's no reason to sit there. Why am I crying? Because they had no tears for me when I was going through things alone for all this time, all they put me through. So you have to make amends and just take it for what it is and let it go. I just know that for Big Bro Shine, which um, his dad was my abuser's best friend. Um, they grew up, they, they knew each other before me and, um, and Sean were born, you know? And uh, we still kept in contact. I did not go to the, um, the services and go figure, go figure. Out of all the places she could have put him, the way she did it was just disgraceful. My mama, karma is going to be a bitch. And I, I really pray for her mercy, for real. Because even if I was not there, my aunt still flew up here. She stayed with my uh, stepbrothers. And um, the story, it wasn't, it didn't change. You just tell. I know she was uncomfortable. She stuck in the middle. Um, and she took pictures of uh, the services, and where it was, the, the room it was. I kind of feel mixed about that, and not in a good way. My mother ought to be ashamed of herself. Because even if that was one of my abusers, the way she did things in the service, she wasn't expecting to get his friends out there and people that he wanted to have out there, not just for her show, his family. She didn't even have the respect enough to even contact his own sons. Keep in mind, we've all known each other since 1986, okay? Didn't even have the respect enough to call his mother and let her know that her son passed away. His mother is still alive, by the way. At 98. She ought to be shamed. But again, karma has no deadline, but he was still living in the house and still supported your kids and still raised your kids, even your grandkid. But that's not my battle line and my judgment. I just, I'm watching how things play out. And when, um, not even just for Big Bro Sean, but even for my unsunny pictures, even for my abuser, I wouldn't wish that on anybody. That was just disgraceful. And so now every time I have to go visit my dad in his resting place or my brother who's upstairs next to my grandmother, my grandma, I was grandma, grandmother and daddy downstairs. Other floor is my brother and my other grandma, mama's mom. So she bought a crib. So now to sit there and pass by my stepdad, my abuser every time. <laughs> and it's weird because some of you guys heard clairvoyance and mediums are spiritually sensitive and pick up on things. Yes, the dead can hear you. And yes, they do talk back. The way she did it was just disgraceful. It was disgraceful. And so as I need to make closure, I already have closure anyway. I uh, dropped flowers off to my brother, to grandmother, to grandma and daddy, and I dropped flowers off to him too. And from there, this is where it gets weird because some of you guys have had this experience too, that anytime a loved one passes away, they're still processing. So I say panoramic view because whatever they did in this life, they have a, a, a fast track of everything they've gone through and not just their experiences for good and for bad, but also they get to have experience of others who are still down here of how they made that person feel for the tears for the pain for those experiences they go through that it's like a processing te temporary transition everybody's gone through this and the older you get i swear the more sensitive you get um but for him like i've had that i had that happen with big bro lawrence when he passed away and it goes into a, a different realm it's like they're trying to find a place it's not quite purgatory i don't know how to, to name it. it's so weird Daddy, big time. My brother, big time. 
who else? There's, there's a couple people. And you start to experience your emotions too from over here. It's, it's kind of weird. I'm not trying to make it happen. It runs in our blood. But for my stepdad, I'm thinking that, um, because after a while, a, a couple days, even within the past, they're still passing through and still reflecting. And they also get residual energy, which is weird. I never had that, with, not like that with daddy. Never had that with my brother too. Weird. They're on a whole different journey. It was interesting. But for my stepdad, it's weird because as I'm doing spiritual stuff, I'm just saying good morning to the ancestors. And he's new to this, so now he sees everything that the other ancestors see. And I'm thinking that maybe he's communicating, making peace with his life. No, he's still being a pervert. For the songs that came on and just certain things, I don't know where it came from, but no, 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 no. I have to banish him from my space, like completely. He does not belong here. He served his purpose here. I always wish him the best, but you must leave. You do not belong here. And daddy and my brother are happy after that, which is weird. The way the candles are dancing, there's some metaphysical paranormal shit that was going on, you guys. But no, 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 no. Stepdad is still chest and molester, and then just no, 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 no. <laughs> Never again, no more. You must go. So let's see. Aside from that, I made peace with that. I'm okay. I actually feel better. Same with my brother. You guys didn't see my brother's funeral? No. Were you guys who attended my brother's funeral? You guys never saw me shed a tear. I came in there wearing purple and gold with, with the dirty hat, okay? I was celebrating because that was my day of freedom from the, the people who held me down with pain and traumatized me. I still did the right thing as my brother's keeper, but that released me from the traumas I've been through. So now my life goes on. That's closure. The person who did these awful things to me, I'm not just talking about simple off things. I'm talking about a whole slew of things. I'm glad you're at peace. Now my life can go on. So aside from that, what else am I missing? Um, sex change, dealing with um, some interesting uh, projects coming up with blessings in disguise in the making. It's interesting because everything's coming together, including me picking up where I left off with daddy's project. And it is actually making my case stronger because there are some things in the making. And it's so weird because I'm taking my time to have to retain, because um, I can only do so much. I'm building the case. I always build the case and then give it, find somebody for proper representation, but find somebody who's aggressive. So these next couple months, I'll be coming up with a whole different project, but it's time for payout um, as I'm playing everything back. And pick it up where we left off and get some closure for daddy too. What else is there? JBD, but I still need to get back to you. I'm just going through it, as you can see. And hormones all over the place. <laughs> so what happened in my life? I returned back to uh, working for the government soon. I was still waiting for my date. And everything came together. And I'm excited because I'm like, not Rose the Rivets here. I'm like, a <laughs> dude. So my whole role changes. And it fits everything. I'm just happy and excited. Uh, let's see what else is there. I talked to, I reconnected. And it's so weird how uh, the spirit works. Because for daddy's neighbor, he just had surgery yesterday. And I'm sure things are well. I'm just still keeping my energy protected and distant, but still supportive. And because in talking to him, I learned a lot. <laughs> oh, I swear God has a sense of humor. So does my dad. For some of the shit I'm looking at, again, the truth has a way of manifesting. It's beyond his control. He even know what the hell happened. Oh, I got you, boo. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is put on my nerd hat and go into my normal thing and everything's coming together it's just a process and all at once i'm just trying to close things out before i go back to work um it's just interesting to watch people hang themselves because all my things like the truth never changes you guys so if you know what you said you have proof of what you said the story never changes especially if it's true it just find it comical for narcissists how they sit there and keep switching up their stories and when they don't know when they can't take accountability for their actions they either try to uh, avoid you or destroy you and they still hang themselves after so now it becomes it shows even more about you know uh competence and able and able to handle situations and the example i said especially for certain rankings or your label you know what i mean because nobody's perfect we're all human but you still have to just do the right thing and if you fucked up, say you fucked up. If you scared, say you scared. 
and just try to make it right. Take ownership of your bullshit because all that blame shifting, and I'm seeing that for people in certain professions, they're acting on emotion, not on professionalism. Because so I guarantee that if a uh, deputy chief was actually paying attention, she would have never, because out of all the officers or the investigating chain that had to review certain projects, she was the only one that told her herself because she didn't think about what she was doing beforehand. And even after, after I said it several times, she admitted that she had went to that several weeks ago. And you're still continuing to continue this? And you're lying to me and I'm catching you lying with the time, date, stamp, everything to show I'm still looking at your name on my platform. Only that change this time is that you sit there and switch your uh, settings from public to private, but you're still stopping me and harassing me. No, I don't feel comfortable. And for Sergeant Breakfast, I feel bad for him. He got caught up and he's on a recorded line telling on himself, trying to cover you. <laughs> And after we said he couldn't do it, I already had things in the making anyway. I got it done. The main thing is just for people to stop. It all just starts with simple things. So if people say, you know what, it's been a pleasure, but I don't feel comfortable. I'm not fucking with you anymore. Leave it like that. If I tell you that I'm not comfortable with you watching my page and the way you did it was unprofessional, please remove yourself. Remove yourself. If I just ask you, so you have all the, the, the things here to get your job done. All the tools to complete the job that was given to you. And I fall back and you still can't do it. The key thing is just do your damn job and do what was asked you. Do what was your paid, your paid services. But again, it goes back to ego and people don't think with logic. And simple fixes should never be this complicated for me. It's just fun because you guys are giving me a chance to exercise my brain. You're keeping me active during this pandemic while I'm on leave. <laughs> Before I return to work. Again, I want to sit there and just tell my daddy again, because he prepped me for this. Thank you, daddy. Because it was not for him and me learning. People ask me again, how am I so savvy in law and things that I do? It's because my dad walked me through things. When it comes to plumbing, even for me, he made me get my um, EPA cert for uh, HVAC and stuff like that because my dad was a chief building engineer. So whenever he was doing stuff, he was showing me too. <laughs> Changing bulbs and doing wiring, even before we had the uh, rental properties and stuff like that, learned to my daddy. When it came to um, real estate, he opened up my eyes to that. So from there, so many different levels of real estate to, to work in, not just buying and selling houses, but also rentals and, and things like that. There's so many different levels to real estate. But daddy put my foot in the door and stayed on top of me so I could learn everything. And I'm still not done. He taught me about law because all the stuff, the foolishness that my mom put him through when she was, she was being, she's one of those baby mamas to sit there and make you pay and just go through your pockets and try to keep the kids away from you and turn the kids against you. My dad to sit there. He walked me by showing me all the court doctor says, so I know what your mom is saying. You don't have to hear what I'm saying, but this is what is going on with court. So I'm seeing where I sh he showed that he was paying this, paying that, uh, uh, documents for, um, the courts filed actions taken. You know, daddy showed me how to be organized and what to look for. And it's not about just law. Because I've never pretended to be an attorney. Thank God, my peace of mind, I can't do it. But it's just knowing how to protect yourself. And from there, he gave me the most craziest challenges. And I sit and take them on. And I start getting stronger. And I know he's proud of me. Me for what's happening right now. And daddy, I say thank you. Because whenever he's opened up with these new doors, and I feel bad because for um, for for uh, our mutual partner for me and Broski, I had to call him last week to let him know in case anything happens, just know this is not about you. I say we have a holding situation because I have a problem with your wife's homegirl, you know what I mean, who happens to be your superior. So make sure I didn't dirty Mac anybody, and for Broski, whatever happened, Nothing to do with you. A whole fucking hallway of doors opened up on some other shit. <laughs> it all started with me just wanting to stop contacting you, dude. So whatever happens before forward, nothing to do with you. This is way bigger. <laughs> so that's just say thank you. I'm just thankful for blessings. There's so many different forms. And that's amazing because even with the craziest things that we learn in life, um, it all starts with you and how you see life. We always have something new to learn, you guys. And it's helping me grow. Like, I'm, I'm picking up where I left off.
And something tells me I'll be owning a few properties <laughs> in the next 18 months. <laughs> oh, God, I have to get back on track with everything, you guys. Not bad. It's just, it's interesting. And then I'll never forget some things that bro said, too. Because um, it's not too good to spend too much time alone. Because I've been on leave, even before that, because even before I went on leave before, I was um between COVID and I still had complications of COVID, heart. <laughs> Um, I've been on leave for a long time before the pandemic even happened on and off and I enjoy having time by myself I don't mind spending time with people here and there but I just like my peace of mind I have things to do this is really a true time where I'm actually healing I just don't I like people but I don't like people <laughs> I don't know kind of funny coming from a labor we're good at moving around doesn't mean we actually want to know I don't know and I still have to adjust to that too because I know you people still, people are uh, it's interesting because people are having to adjust to calling me sir using no pronouns and calling me my new name. You're like what? Ooh. <laughs> For men to learn, you guys don't care either way. I don't care how attractive I'm trying to look. I don't care about being fuzzy wuzzy had a bear or having a mustache going in. Or I'm saying I'm a dude. <laughs> men still hit on you. I don't know. I just I quit. I don't know. I don't know. Let's stop the show though. I'm gonna be a cool dude. <laughs> but I just know I'm happy with my journey, you guys. So anyway, you guys always find a reason to smile and be grateful. For me, aside from the police department has to call me back after return some messages and do some research before I fire off a um <sighs> executed process. It's not bad. It's just having to get it done. But um staying unplugged and staying unavailable otherwise. Everything's a process and all in due time. Everything works out. You just have to trust the time in your life. And I am because everything's confirmation. I'm enjoying this right now. <laughs> Who is that? Okay. I'm just looking at stuff on my page. Anyway, you guys have a good one. Take care. God bless.